Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about a mechanic that's been in Fallout 76 since launch, and that's going to be taming. So if you look right over here, we have a beta fish in this bowl, and as you can see, it's tamed. Now, you may ask yourself how to get this, and it's actually in the atom shop for about 300 atoms, so if you want to go ahead and tame, there you go. No, I'm actually just kidding. So, there's actually tameable beasts such as Mega Sloths and some other creatures like Deathclaws that we're going to be going over in today's video. I'm just going to be breaking down the basic fundamentals of taming. So there are a couple of things you're going to need to know before we get into the whole taming situation and these were made clear from a couple of reddit posts which I'm going to be linking in the description as well as an article from Game Rant which I'm blatantly using their little info here and that is the animal must be less than half the tamer's level, the animal must spawn alone, and the animal must be a random spawn not tied to an event where it will occasionally respawn. This left me with a lot of questions and I didn't really know what a lot of it meant so this video is going to be more clarifying what you need to do in order to tame them and how exactly you tame them. So the first thing you're going to want to know is you're going to need to find a place with hot spots of random events and the easiest place to do that is the Cranberry Bog. Actually it's right around this area next to the Superior Sunset Farm and this was linked in the Reddit post as well. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the spots where I found random events spawn. And if you're going to go for this, you're not going to want to fast travel straight there. You're going to want to fast travel to that drop site right there and walk your way over there. That way you have a higher chance of having events spawn on your way there and once you get there. Now this doesn't always mean that you're going to be getting the event that you want, as in a single spawn Deathclaw or a single spawn Mega Sloth. No, you'll be getting a whole plethora of different events. On this one, I ended up actually overhearing Super Mutants who were talking about how they didn't want to follow their boss. I ran into Mothman. I ran into a robot that wanted to tell me the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Really, it's so random that you just really have to either server hop or, you know, keep keep trying these event spots. And once you kind of recognize the event spots and recognize what they are, it's easier to determine where they can spawn. For instance, like when you see a bunch of float flies standing around like this, that is a place where an event can spawn or a single object can spawn, as in a single death claw or anything like that. Now, you may say, well, I thought they couldn't be event tied. And really, it, they're all random events. It just can't be one like this where the Deathclaw has a nest. You can't you can't tame this Deathclaw. And you also can't tame Deathclaws like this, where they're in an area, they're alone, but as you can see, there's already a dead Deathclaw there. That's where they spawn. You can't tame them there. So you have to go ahead and find a different spot, like the ones I put, where there's no nest, they're just by themselves, they're not being attacked by anything, they're not attacking anything. And that's how you can get one that is by themselves. So once you actually go ahead and find one, this was my Mega Sloth, what you're going to want to do is you're going to either want to pacify it, or you can just hit the tame button immediately. I prefer pacifying and then walking up to it, but you'll be met with that prompt where it just says send this animal to your camp, and it tells you if you have a current animal, this will override it. Um, what that means is that when, when you have one, you'll see in a second, I go ahead and get my death claw and and it overrides the sloth. They'll both be there, but the sloth will go away once you relog. What happens when you pacify them is they book it straight back to your camp. So the thing is, is the distance that your camp is, is the amount of time it's going to take for them to get there. On top of that, how fast they are comes into play with this. If they're a slow animal, don't expect them to be at your camp immediately. Wait about 5 or 10 minutes, then they should show up, especially depending on the area that they have to cover along with some of the other things i wouldn't recommend following them back following them back is kind of dangerous as you see coming up here we end up getting shot me and my death claw and he ends up taking damage so that that's a risk that they can they can die before they even get back to your base and on top of that he kind of glitched out after uh he got shot at so i just wouldn't recommend following them back and instead just waiting for them to come back to your camp so before this video ends, I'm just going to be giving you a couple of quick questions that people ask about it. Yes, they are hostile to anybody around your camp. Not you, but the restriction to this is that anybody in your squad doesn't take damage from them. And they can't deal any damage to them. So really, you're kind of protected there. The only thing it'll do to your squad mates that's kind of annoying is it'll stop them from fast traveling, which if you just aim at them and pacify again, it allows them to fast travel. So just make sure that your perk is at least on so that you can spare them that convenience. Um, on top of that, people can attack them. We did have a moment where somebody attacked my Deathclaw, 
and they got a cat bounty on them. But then after that, another dude came and he attacked the death claw again, and he didn't get a bounty. So you're just gonna have to be careful with your death claws and make sure that nobody's going around killing them, or at least they know that they're friendly and they don't mean to hurt anybody. With that being said though, we're going to continue testing this on higher level enemies and I will be trying to get another video out on more complicated tamings. Once again, this is just the basics. If you liked it or you have any questions, go ahead and just leave them in the comments and you know, I'll try to get to them and I'll try to clarify some more things in case you're wondering. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one.